Hello and welcome to the Cambridge interview session in our webinar series. So I'm going to get straight into it. What can you expect from a Cambridge interview? Well, first of all, the word interview, I would say it's more like an academic conversation, an interactive dialogue, a discussion between you as the candidate and your interviewers. What they're looking to assess is your core subject knowledge, your informed enthusiasm for the subject, and also whether you'd be suitable for Cambridge teaching and learning. So these small group supervision or at Oxford, they're called tutorials. These small group supervisions are discussion-based teaching and learning methods. So that's what we mean by suitability for Cambridge teaching. So an interview is really a chance for you to expand on what you've submitted to us in the application process. So your personal statement, other elements of your application, such as submitted written work or a portfolio that's relevant for various courses, but might not be relevant for you. And then you can also expect that you'd be asked to respond critically and analytically to new information, new material, new sources, new ideas or arguments. Maybe it comes in the form of a passage. Maybe it's an image. It could be a data set, a graph as well. And to those unfamiliar stimuli, as we call them, these, this, this new information, these new sources, you'd be expected to apply what you already know to those unfamiliar new pieces of information or ideas. So that's what apply existing knowledge to unfamiliar problems means. And you can also expect in your interview to receive guidance um, and clarification if you need from your interviewers. So if one of the questions that they've asked you isn't clear to you, you're not quite sure what they're looking for, or you'd just like them to rephrase the question, um, then you can ask for them to do that. And they likewise can ask for further clarification from you as well about what you've said in response. Now, typically you would have two interviews, but this does vary across the subjects, across the courses and indeed the colleges. So make sure you're looking at the college's websites, the pages about interviews, the specific subject or course pages will have information about interviews there. They're usually around 30 minutes each, these interviews, um, but some subjects, if they just have that one interview as opposed to two, um, then they might be 40 minutes. And typically you would have two interviewers um, uh, interviewing you as the candidate. So what are we not looking for? Not is the operative word here on my slide. So it's in all caps. What are we not looking for um, in, in an interview? So we're not going to be talking to you about any extracurricular activities that you are doing or have done that aren't relevant to the course. So an example I like to use is obviously if you are a musician, that's relevant if you're applying for music, but it's not going to come into the conversation in an interview for maths, for instance. Your college choice is also not what is being assessed here. It's really your subject choice, your course uh, decision that you've made, the course that you're applying for, your commitment to that course, your suitability for that course or subject. Um, so that's really what we're assessing in an interview. We're also not looking for any particular type personality or character, we're really looking to assess the thinking person that lives inside um, the, the bodily exterior, if you will. We're really not assessing you in terms of how you look or how you sound, anything like that. And just two key takeaway points there. Remember that interviews are not make or break. They are one element of the application process and we assess you holistically and in context. Um, so each individual applicant um, all of the things that you've submitted to us and all of the performances at interview, at an assessment that we've asked you to take, that's all gonna be taken into account. And interviews are also crucially not designed to catch you out. The interviewers, um, they're doing lots of interviews. They want to enjoy them and they want to have conversations with young people who are interested in their subject. That's what they're looking to get out of these interviews. They're, they're, they're not gonna try and catch you out with trick questions. Um, they really want you to perform at, at your best. So that's why on the previous slide, I had that point about if you need to, you can ask for clarification, you can ask for further guidance. So in terms of interviews for STEM subjects, so science and maths based courses, what can you expect to be asked to do in an interview? 
So you can definitely expect to be asked to solve problems, to solve maths-based, science-based questions. And these will probably be multi-step. So you might start with a single problem, a single question, and then often, depending on where you go with that question or that problem, depending on your solution, your response, then it will then have multiple stages. Um, so it might cover lots of different but related topics. Typically, those sorts of questions, those math science based, um, the multiple stage questions, they'll be based on what you should already know in terms of your existing school curriculum knowledge. But they're probably going to be coming at it from an angle, a different approach, or they're going to be going into a little bit more depth. And that is what's going to be challenging and stretching you. They'll go a little bit further than what you can expect from from classwork. You'll also need to apply your subject knowledge to new problems, new scenarios. So as we said earlier in the presentation, um, that's going to be what uh, you can expect. It's going to be about testing your critical thinking processes, your ability to be analytical, to be logical. Um, and it's you, you can expect that the questions will maybe be quite unfamiliar to you, but they will still be questions that will be based on existing school curriculum knowledge. They'll just be pushing you, you a little bit further, asking you to bring multiple topics in perhaps, um, and, and presenting this unseen stimulus, whether it's a graph or a data set, whatever it may be. So for medicine and veterinary medicine interviews, you can expect there to be some discussion of the vocational aspects for those courses. So going on to be a vet, going on to be a doctor or working in the health and social and medical sphere in, in, in any sense, really. So you can expect there to be some discussion of that, of your experience with that, and also questions relating to it. And then there is also likely to be some discussion of your personal statement, which you will have submitted as well. So. Knowing that, how can you then prepare for STEM interviews? So I would say, first of all, definitely keep revising your course relevant content. So the school curriculum, your classwork, your homework, your revision, but go beyond it. So explore, engage all of the things that you have done for your personal statement. Um, and in, in general, just to compare, com prepare, sorry, a competitive application and um, all of this super curricular engagement you should be carrying on with that um, in preparation for an interview. So some useful resources that I've got on the slide there, Isaac Physics, um, I Want to Study Engineering or Enrich and the STEP Support Programme, all of these are listed on our, on our websites and also in that super curricular suggestions document on the main university web pages. And so practice this uh, problem solving that you're gonna face in the interview. Practice it on your own, um, but also in small peer groups as well. Make sure that you are talking through the question, because of course in the interview, it's a conversation, it's a dialogue, there's that verbal element, um, and you might not be used to talking through an equation, talking through a problem in that way, out loud, um, explaining why you've chosen to uh, solve it or head in whatever direction you've, you've, you've gone in. So make sure that you have practice actually talking through what you're doing. Um, and I would say also, if you struggle with any of the problems that you come across through these, these resources, the I Want to Study Engineering or Enrich or the STEP Support Programme website that has lots of guided questions and problems for you to, to work through, um, do seek help from your teachers um, for, for that and then go away and find out what the solution is or, or, or where the problem might lead. So, so really follow up on this practice, this active talking through practice for your interviews. Okay, now moving on to arts and humanities. So what can you expect in these interviews? So you can definitely expect there to be some unseen source, some unseen material, be it text or visual. Um, it could be a poem, uh, it could be a piece of prose, it could be an image, uh, image of an object perhaps. Um, you can also expect questions to be drawn from your personal statement. Um, and or your samples of written work that you've submitted to us as well. So um, typically a few of the questions in the interview will cover different topics, different issues, and they'll be asking you to apply what you already know. Um, they might be asking you to uh, consider a new argument uh, with different evidence, um, or they might ask you to challenge an idea that is um, that is contained within the source, the material, whatever it is that has been put in front of you. So 
So that's what you can expect from arts and humanities interviews. Okay, so how would you prepare? Well, very similarly to what we were saying for STEM interviews, revise that course content um, and go beyond that curriculum content as well. So some examples that are relevant for arts and humanities subjects, maybe read works by similar poets, similar authors, similar philosophers, similar historians um, to the ones that you are familiar with from your schoolwork. Make sure you're keeping up to date on current affairs. Also, any current uh, recently discovered research or recently published, sorry, research or any recent discoveries uh, relating to the topics that you are interested in within your subject. And make sure that you've reflected on your personal statement, on the written work samples that you've submitted, and think reflectively in the sense, how would you maybe change your argument? How would you maybe, if you had to rewrite your personal statement, what, what would you change? How would you use things that you've since learned subsequently from, from submitting your personal statement? How might you approach the resource that you've discussed in that personal statement differently? Is there now a resource, an article, a lecture, a documentary, or some something that you've uh, you've explored? that would make you think again about what you've said, your argument, your ideas. So make sure you can be reflective in that way so that you're prepared to, um, to encounter sort of challenges to your ideas in the interview. And practice for the final point there, practice analyzing the, these unseen um, materials, articles, evidence, uh, passages, and discussing them out loud, again, talking through out loud with your with your peers and on your own as well think about how you would summarize an article and can you can you talk about it out loud again the crucial thing here to remember is that these interviews will be verbal so make sure that you can um, speak out loud about your your thoughts and your reflections and so finally some tips so if your interview is going to be online um, then plan where you will be having your interview so make sure you're thinking carefully about the location you basically need somewhere where you won't be disrupted you won't be disturbed and it has a reliable um, internet connection so this could be at school or this could be at home and make sure that you continue as we said before can Continue with that exploration, that super curricular exploration of your, of your subject, of your course, um, and avoid rehearsing. So avoid over-preparing um, and avoid memorizing responses. It's going to be a conversation. So make sure that you are ready to respond to those unfamiliar questions or problems or texts or sources, whatever they may be, and practicing doing that, practicing responding to, um, to new and unfamiliar ideas and evidence and questions. That's going to be how you can actually properly prepare as opposed to you know, rehearse these, these responses that you may not get the question for. So you may not be able to deliver um, a rehearsed response anyway so really avoid that sort of way of over preparing in that rehearsed sense and then finally I think the point I want to leave you with is a Cambridge interview is an excellent opportunity in terms of your academic experiences it's a chance for you to have a conversation with a subject expert so whatever happens in the context of the admissions process of your application, go into your interview thinking, this is an excellent chance for me to talk to someone who maybe has written a, a really important book or article or has, 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 uh, has, has led a research study that is you know, really important in your subject area and really is interesting to you. So maybe your interviewer will, will, uh, will have been you know, the person to have written the, the textbook at school or something like that. Whoever your interview is, they will be an expert in their subject and having a conversation with someone like that at this stage in your academic journey is an opportunity that you really should relish. So that's all I have for uh, the content in this session. Um, please do get in touch with us, accessofficer at joh.cam.ac.uk if you have any questions. Best of luck with your interview.